Anybody else into giant elk? Holy cow. Now I've done a few elk on this channel before, but it's September. It is the, it's technically October. Let's, let's start over. Is anybody else into giant elk? I am. Raise your hand if you love big elk. Hey, today we're gonna do an elk, but I'm gonna showcase a couple of products. We've done a few elk on this channel before, but it's elk season. So I'm gonna give you multiple resources and multiple places to click as we constantly grow and evolve into better skull care people. Now, let me show you something I'm really excited about. I'm gonna pull the camera in. The new interchangeable blade knife from Silverware. No joke, I have been using for over 20 years one knife. Many of you have asked, I use the Havilon, it's actually the Havel fixed handle, the number eight handle, and the 70 XT blades, and I just, I don't take anything else with me. It's what I use, and so to have somebody that's finally playing in the game legitimately, I'm super excited about. If you're at all interested in upgrading your interchangeable blade knife, civilware.com, I'll put the link in the description, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go to work on this elk with this piece. From this point forward, we will do zero complaining about YouTube and all the rules and laws. I don't care. Old school white bone creations, skinning, gutting, cleaning, sharing, learning, everything we're supposed to be doing happens right here. Thank you for watching. How about that bull? How about that for mass? Is that crazy? Thanks Mother Nature, genetics, conservation, good feed, and quality management. Alright y'all, if you've been here a while, you know the drill. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Here's rule number one. Take off as much meat and tissue as you can before the boil. So I'm working with this new silverware knife since I've did that little part in the beginning till now. I've done three elk, a 20 year old bear, and two antelope, and I am in love with this knife. I think it's important for me to tell you, I am not sponsored by or affiliated in any way with this product. It's just a better piece. Give it a look if you're interested and get that meat off. important part of any antler gyro. Don't boil without wrapping the base, the bay, the brow. I see so many pictures on Instagram of guys boiling and I love it. I love that you're doing it and I'm encouraging you. Every time I see one in the pot and there's water up to here or up to here, ugh, you're gonna have to fix this. You're gonna have some sort of variance even if it's just clear water. If you wrap this Shrink wrap, it's a pain in the tail, but it's 10 minutes and you're never gonna have to worry about it. 
Just wrap it with shrink wrap. Starts a little slow. Oops. If I'm not adding value to these videos, I will not put it up for you. I have put up videos in the past where I have not wrapped, and I've showed you how to recolor. If you stay in current with them, you're never gonna recolor again, ever. There's nothing like natural colors. There's no paint, no stain, no anything that'll make it look as good as the actual natural piece. Step one, get it all wrapped up nice and tight. Yes, I go below the pedicle because it doesn't matter. Remember, you're putting boiling, wa boiling water on there. It's gonna steam and saturate that. So when you pull that off, it's just gonna come off easy as anything. And then I put a really tight band right around the base of the antler. And then I just work that band around. All this is doing is holding it in place just in case the boil loosens it up. All right, we've talked about this so many times, but I'm gonna reiterate. These tubs you get at Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, they're just a galvanized silicone seam tub. They are not ideal for long-term use. I've been threatening forever to do this series of pots and I honestly just can't slow down with my day-to-day -to, -day to finish them. So I use these, I'm gonna get one elk out of these and then I'm gonna just throw it away and just get another one. But for right now, I gotta get this thing in the water. So this tub is gonna have to work. All right, once we've got as much meat as we can remove with a knife off and we've wrapped the pedicle, the base of the horn, the brow, the bay, any antlered animal, wrap that antler as good as you can. I drop it in this pot. You heard me explain that the galvanize is not ideal long term. Then I fill it up with water. I add in a little laundry detergent. I just ran out of OxyClean, so I used a little 99 cent store Tide Pack. It doesn't matter, just something to cut the grease. And then I bring it to a boil and pull it out and start power washing off all the meat and all the tissue. I'm working on two elk here and everybody comments that they like the jaw removal. So here's removal number two. I wish there was a skull law that said you need to remove all the meat and all the tissue. Hey, a technique for removing ivories that is super popular, you see it all over the internet, it's because it's the right way to do it and it works great. The guides up on the Tejon Ranch showed me years ago and they are just fantastic at it. So I'm going to show you one from a distance and I'll pull one up close and do it. But essentially you need something softer than the ivory. This is just a, uh, just a plastic headed hammer and then another hammer. And what you want to do in every case is just knock that tooth back. Okay. You can do this in the field with two pieces of wood. It's real simple. No scratching, no scarring. Something I have started doing if I'm working on multiple pieces. There's a bear down in there. This bull, the bull you watched me skin and work on last night is over there. Whenever I'm working on two animals at the same time, I fill a bucket with water and I transfer them into liquid. I don't like them to dry uh, between stages because I only have one pot to boil in right now because I'm hard on them. Uh, so I got to do one at a time. So I pull this one out and start spraying. I'll pull that one out of the liquid and put it in the boil. That way I'm killing two birds with one stone. Let's get to washing. Once the tissue on the top of the nose splits and I can see bone, that's when I start power washing. I use a 1600 PSI, little 110 electric I buy from Lowe's and take that power washer and wash into every hole and every orifice. Anywhere there's meat or tissue, make it go away.
you can spray on a big bull elk for literally hours this one step will speed up everything super fast stick a screwdriver in the ear canal that auditory bull and break that bone free then using a 7 8 or one inch wafer bit drill that hole open you'll be blown away on how much time you save washing with that removed and you're gonna love the look of that nice clean hole where the ear butt used to be once everything is washed clean you can reach in with a pair of forceps give a good twist and pull that whole brain liner out in one piece nowadays i whiten with the product called aqua silk the link is in the description i have 10 gallons of water and one gallon of aqua silk in here i'm going to bring it to a boil and then cut the heat off remove the skull wash it clean and set it in the sun to dry Y'all, I'm working with a new lens here and I just got it set on autofocus and it's getting that clicky in and out thing. Um, I just kind of learned where I need to be with that thing. Anyway, but on the last step here, we wait until they're dry and then I coat them with a flooring mop and glow. That just seals up the bone and keeps the dust from settling in. Uh, it goes on really quick and dries really fast and then everything's good to go. Dinosaur. Crazy, crazy, crazy old. All right, just wrapping up the big bull elk project. They turned out beautiful. That aqua silk product is hot. I mean, it whitens really, really good. Make sure you're putting on your mop and glow. Be gentle with all the debris that's on those horns when you're mop and glowing. Encourage one another. Get out there. Do something constructive. Remember, nice is beautiful and mean is ugly. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs>